Hey everyone, I am Travel Instincts, and before I get started, I apologize for any background noise. I have to keep my AC on because it's like 100 degrees in this room right now. It's really hot. Now, I find that actually kind of funny because what I'm doing today is reviewing something that is supposed to keep my computer cooler. Today, I am reviewing the Intermax 360 millimeter all-in-one cooling system for the Threadripper. All right, so before I got my Threadripper, I was looking around for cooling options, and unfortunately, nothing was made yet for the for the TR4 chipset, which is a much, much bigger chip uh, than anything before it. And I reached out to Intermax. Oh, there shouldn't be a shirt. I reached out to Intermax, and unfortunately, they didn't get back to me right away. Uh, so I went ahead and ordered the NZXT Kraken. Kraken X62, I believe it was. And while that is working, it doesn't keep my computer cool enough for me to do any overclocking. So Intermax got in touch with me, and they sent me this. This is the TR4 360. This is a massive cooling system, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the difference between this and the Kraken X62, specifically testing how much better a larger surface area is for cooling the Threadripper. All right, so if you're just here for the details on if this thing beats out the Kraken X62, I will put a link in the description for whenever I start talking about that. For now, though, I'm going to ramble on about this unit, what comes in it, and also I'm going to walk through the installation of it as well as the removal of the Kraken out of my computer now. All right, standard packaging materials. We have an owner's manual. We have, looks like, three... Very nice feeling fans. These things feel solidly built. They're not like the typical crap that I've seen in a lot of water coolers, uh, but these seems nice. These have a 500 to 2300 RPM, and yeah, these seems pretty nice. Rubber lining on the sides. Vibration should be kept to a minimum uh, overall. I don't know. We'll give these a shot. Typically, I replace any default coolers right off the bat, but I'll probably actually give these a go first. Next up, we have the parts baggie. Inside here, it looks like, yep, that's going to be the three-in-one cable, allowing us to have one single power supply powering all of those fans. A Molex adapter, which I won't be using. And a baggie within a baggie. Fantastic! And here we have a bunch of screws. Most of these I probably won't be using at all. And then a very adorable little thing of thermal paste. That's so cute. Uh, man, I, I might want to, I just want to keep this one. This is, that's adorable. All right, and lastly, almost lastly, more packaging. Lastly, here we have the unit itself. Gosh, that's, this, this, <laughs> this part right here has got some heft to it. It is not light. Let's get this thing out of here. Oh, it is huge. So this thing says it covers 100% of the plate, and I believe it. That is a massive socket. Gosh, the Threadripper's huge. Cool. All right, so we're going to give that thing a go. I cannot wait. Just unboxing the rest of it. 360 millimeters of glorious heat dispersion. It's so big. All right, so next up, I'm going to uh, take the Kraken out of my computer, put this thing back in it, and then after that, I will get to the details on what how the Kraken performed, which I do already have those details, and then I'm going to run some tests about how this goes. One thing to note real quick before I go ahead and put this thing in, I am so far impressed with the quality of this. I'm impressed and also a little bit um, unhappy. So I haven't ever looked very, very closely at one of my uh, uh, cooling units before, specifically at the, uh, the fins here. The, there's quite a few of them that are kind of bent just a little bit. I, I, I don't know. I just, I've never actually looked... I don't know if that's going to come through at all. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. There's some that are just kind of bent in. There's not enough of them that it's going to cause an issue. It's really just down in this little corner. It looks like maybe something got pressed up against it. So that's kind of disappointing. Uh, but ultimately, there's plenty of air throw f throughout all this thing. That won't be an issue. Um, so while that is disappointing, overall, though, I am impressed with the build quality of this. Uh, the, the sides of this has a nice rubber uh, layer, so it looks like they've definitely gone the extra mile to make sure that there will be a minimum amount of noise. Now again, I've never really looked at one of my cooling units before, so this review is not necessarily comparing build quality between this and the Kraken, uh, although whenever I get it out, I'll check for that too. It's really just comparing 
which one cools the most. As I get more experience with the different coolers, then maybe I can talk more about the pros and cons of the actual builds. But so far, for the first time of actually looking at this, I am impressed. There is a lot of very sturdy metal in this thing. This piece right here, the pump specifically, there is, it's about half the weight of this entire unit. Uh, so that will be, uh, th that'll be nice. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting this thing will last. All right, but enough about this. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into my computer. And after that, I will talk about the results after I've gone and tested it. Close up here, just so you can see how much thermal paste spreading was on the cold plate of the NZXT Kraken. So almost full coverage here, and I'll show you what it looks like on the Threadripper. All right, so there is the coverage on the Threadripper itself. You can see it covers most of it, but there's still a pretty decent amount uncovered. And it's also important to note that even though the cold plate of the, uh, of the NZXT Kraken is that large, underneath it is a completely different unit that is actually really responsible for the cooling. So it's not even touching that much, but it's not doing that good of a job of dispersing it. I would encourage you, if you're interested in all this, to go check out the video by uh, Gamer Nexus. I'll put a link in the description. He goes into really, really deep detail on how much the thread ripper needs to be covered for it to actually contact all the dyes and really do an efficient job of dispersing that heat. I seriously like this look more than the NZXT. I don't like the flashy stuff. This thing, I just, I just like it. Now let's see if it was worth the effort. All right, and the results are in. I've spent the last few days comparing the Intermax Liquid Tech 360 millimeter TR4 all-in-one cooling system compared to the Kraken X62. Now, first off, I understand that this is not an apples to apples comparison, all right? I'm not really comparing these two. I am really just reviewing the Intermax liquid cooler with a Kraken as sort of a comparison for a baseline, okay? This is not an apples to apples. This is 280 millimeters, I get that. This is 360, so naturally this thing should have a little bit better cooling right off the bat. That said, I do think that the results in comparison to the Kraken X62 is pretty interesting. All right, so let's start with the baseline. Through this process, I found that there are some pretty interesting dynamics of this process. This is the first time I've really gone through and tried to overclock a computer manually, and so I learned some things. Uh, one of those is that the Threadripper has some pretty interesting dynamic manipulation of the voltage and the megahertz that is running through an individual core. Because of that, just using the auto function, it makes it a little bit hard for me to get proper temperature testing. So my solution to that was to manually set all the cores to 3.45 gigahertz. And that's with 1.2 volts of power being pushed through it. And for all these tests, I used Prime95 to push the processor as hard as it could possibly go. This guy right here, at technically a half a gigahertz less than what the advertised clock speed is for the processor, got really, really hot with just 3.45 megahertz being run through it with 1.2 volts of power. It was throttling the CPU within just a few minutes. The temperature jumped up to 85 degrees Celsius within the first three minutes of me running Prime 95. So it had to be shut down. This thing could not handle even 3.45 gigahertz on all the cores. Now, again, if you run it on auto, if you're not trying to do any overclocking, then it automatically regulates the power on individual cores, makes them higher, makes them lower, so it doesn't have to get quite as hot. So this thing is actually completely fine as long as you leave everything exactly like it comes. So in an attempt just to overclock the processor as high as I could, I tried dropping the voltage and increasing the megahertz. Uh, however, then I just started running into errors. So this thing as it is, does not allow for overclocking on a Threadripper processor. The Intermax is an entirely different story. With all of the settings the exact same, with the only difference is a new cooling system inside there, I was able to run Prime95 for 15 minutes and the highest that it ever got was 51.8 degrees Celsius. That's pretty nice. Now what about a more realistic test? 
Whenever I ran Premiere Pro, I ran both these again with the same setting, with the exact same video. I did everything exactly the same between these two. The rendering for Premiere Pro, it only got this guy up to 67.4 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that is not bad. That is within the realm of acceptable. It's okay. This one, however, only got up to a maximum of 44.1 degrees Celsius. So again, in a realistic setting, just a natural way of using it, this one keeps it cooler by a lot. All right, so if you're here just to find out which one of these is better for your processor, the answer is this one. If you've got the room for the 360 millimeter fan, this is the way to go, hands down. This is cheaper. As it is right now, the Unimax is only 150 for the 360 millimeter, while the Kraken X62 is 160. All right, so we're done with the Kraken. This one is okay for just standard use cases. However, if you're going to be really pushing the Threadripper, this one's kind of dangerous because you're going to be putting into some high temperatures and therefore you're going to see some throttling. All right, now let's push this bad boy to its capacity. Let's see how cool it can keep my processor with the maximum amount of power. So unfortunately for me, it seems like I did not win the silicon lottery with my Threadripper. I was not able to achieve a stable 4.0 gigahertz run. Now that is not the fault of the Intermax. Even at four gigahertz, the throttling was not due to the processor. This thing stayed at a maximum temperature of 75 degrees Celsius prior to the processor being throttled due to heat on the motherboard. Okay, this thing never got hot enough to th throttle it. The motherboard throttled it because it was getting too hot. So it looks like I need a better cooling system for my entire computer case. The Intermax though, kept the processor nice and cool. So to step back down, I went to 3.9 gigahertz, and this is with 1.3 volts of power. And at that point, I was able to get a stable run of Prime 95 with no errors, and it ran never any CPU throttling. So it looks like 3.9 gigahertz is the best that I can go. And for that, the processor never rose above 70.3 degrees Celsius. Now here's the fun part. Whenever I ran at 3.9 gigahertz, I was using 443 watts of power for just the processor. Which that means that the advertising of saying that this thing can disperse 500 watts of power is actually correct. With a 70.3 degrees Celsius temperature with 443 watts of power, I would say that this thing is pretty accurate. Now is it worth it for the Threadripper to be pushed that far? Now I did, went back and I did some real life testing with that to find out is pushing my computer that hard actually worth it? The answer is no. Whenever I did my baseline test with 3.45 gigahertz, I did that video processing and my rendering time at that speed for the Intermax was five minutes and five seconds. Using that exact same video file, doing it at 3.9 gigahertz, I was able to do it a little bit quicker at four minutes and 21 seconds. I ran it again because I figured it'd be much faster than that and 4.28 seconds. So not a whole lot of variance there. So no matter what, I saved 30 seconds off that, 40 seconds off of it. So for a longer file, obviously the, the results would have been a little bit more impressive in terms of how much total time was saved, but not significantly. So at that point, I scratched my head and tried to figure out what was going on. And it finally dawned on me that that advertisement for 4.0 gigahertz turbo speed is not actually just an advertising thing to get people to buy their processors. It actually makes a difference. Now, I'm sure that half the people that are watching this video right now will be like, yeah, of course, duh, you're an idiot, Tribal. Uh, but well, yes, I am an idiot and I haven't looked into these things enough in the previous part of my computing life. So new things for me. So I dropped it back down to auto and here's what I found. When you use the automatic settings for the Threadripper processor, it's able to do some pretty cool things to regulate heat and give power where it needs it. Whenever I'm watching the actual clock speeds on any of the cores, whenever I set it manually, every single processor is always running at the same voltage at the same speed. Whenever you use auto, I saw ranges in how fast each of the cores was going down from 2.8 gigahertz, which is not very fast, up to 4.0. And these fluctuated dynamically throughout the process. So here's what I found. Whenever I ran the auto settings for the exact same video file that I ran before for 3.9 gigahertz, I saw a speed of four minutes and 58 seconds compared to the four minutes and 26 seconds. All right, so it is slightly slower, but that's only 11% performance improvement whenever I go up to the 3.9 gigahertz. So here's what I found. Whenever I ran that exact same video file through the render using the automatic settings, I saw a speed of four minutes and 58 seconds. Now that is slower than the 3.9 gigahertz running of four minutes and 28 seconds, but that's only an 11% speed improvement. Now just to see if that translates to, you know, more of the typical benchmarking systems, I ran Cinebench. At 3.9 gigahertz, I got a max score of 3,273. Pretty nice. 
Whenever I ran it on auto, I got 2,924. Okay, so again, slight decrease. Again, 11%, okay, so the performance changes is pretty consistent, 11% total performance increase whenever I go from auto settings to 3.9 gigahertz. Now here's the kicker though, whenever I ran auto with Cinebench, I was seeing 170 watts of power drawn to the processor. Whenever I ran with 3.9 gigahertz, I saw 363 watts. That is a total increase of 113% power draw. So the concept of diminishing returns really strikes home here. You're looking at an 11% performance increase with 113% increase in your power draw. And temperatures going from 47 degrees, this is just for Cinebench again, to 57. Now that's a pretty short test, so it, you, know, you don't really have time to see the higher thermals that you do with something like Prime 95. So if you're doing a long running rendering for you know, Premiere or After Effects or whatever it is, your temperatures are going to get really, really hot. For me personally, I have concluded that unless I can get like to 4.5 gigahertz for the same power draw, I, which I can't, uh, it's just not worth it. So for me, going back down to stock settings seems like the right thing to do. All right, so final thoughts. This thing is a winner, okay? The Intermax product is far superior for cooling off the Threadripper specifically. That is not to say that the Kraken is a bad cooler. However, because of the new socket size for the, for the Threadripper, you need a bigger cold plate to disperse that heat. At the highest fan speeds, I did notice that the Intermax was slightly louder than the Kraken. However, we're going from two fans to three, so somewhat to be expected. It's still a quieter system than what I've used in the past. I'm not saying it's bad, I'm not saying it's great, and I don't really have any great measurement data to give you on that one. Next time I do one of these reviews, I will get a decibel meter, so I will actually be able to get you know real empirical data for it. But for now, it's just it's it's not as quiet as I would hope. And I'm pretty much done here. Thank you to Intermax for sending me out this review unit. This has been a fantastic learning experience. I love going in and diving in and figuring out what I need to know to give you guys information. Let me know what I missed. I wanna do more of these reviews in the future. I would appreciate your feedback to tell me, are there any things that I spent too much time on? Did I not touch on things that I should have? Let me know how I can make these reviews more beneficial to you. That's all for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button below. If you didn't, hit the downvote button and tell me what I can do to make them better. And if you want to see more, hit subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.